guys, welcome to our video. Today we'll be talking about special angles, triangles, and CT preps. The do's, the don'ts, the big no-nos. What to expect. And of course, the sample problems. So hope you enjoy our video! Hi guys, my name is Mika Reyes. I'm Kitty Jalayon. I'm Laika Samson. I'm Joel Uwe. I'm Jeremy Sam. I'm Andrea Cantilado. And we are here to give you tips on how to survive your college entrance exams. So let's start. <laughs> okay, let's start with me. Okay. So um, I think the most important. I think the most important thing that you have to remember when you're taking the college entrance test is that you need to like really study because like a lot of people were telling me that hey you know, it's it's not that hard it's like the NET or the C whatever so stuff like that so far and you're telling me that you don't have to study for it now it's just basic knowledge but then you really 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 have to study like you have to go back ever since like you were freshman and it's gonna come out in the test like kahit it's a small number that small number can save your life so you have to study my tip is to eat well and rest well. Because you're going to be taking that test for more than three hours. So if you want to be alive, awake, and proper, proper, satisfied. <laughs> what? Properly satisfied? Yes. My college tip for you is to always have sweets and chocolates and um, water while taking the exam. It's going to help you stay awake and like keep you energized because I swear you will get sleepy at one point. Yeah, that's true. Like I heard that one time you know, after <laughs> the I fell asleep. Yeah, oh like after the acid there's this one person who collapsed because you know he was like having such a hard time. So sleep you should well, really rest well. Sleep well, rest okay. well. Hard time. R and R. It's important. Alright, uh, my tip is to always like to not take too long in one number. You have to move on in order to finish the oh test quickly. If you miss a number, <laughs> if you <laughs> if you stay too well, if you focus on one number too much, you're not gonna be you're gonna waste more time. Because each test they set every number is allotted at least one minute per number. So if you don't understand the problem, go back to it later. And always remember to go back to the basics. Because the basics have pulled everything. Back to basics. Uh, Alright? Okay. It'll be rather simple. Never studied the night before. Make sure you make you made use of all the time you were given to study. You're given weeks and months to study for this. Do not do, do not study all the subjects that you need to know the night before. Yeah. It will not help you. I tried it. Over. No cramming. <laughs> okay, one more tip. Like, if you even if you pass other colleges, okay, pretend I have a backup school, and then I pass my other colleges. But I also want to get in the back of school because like, it's like, na if you don't, So you don't really study for that back of college now. Because you're thinking that uh, since I passed the other test, man, I, can, I will pass the other one. Like, no! <laughs> you still have to study! <laughs> like, even if it's your back of school, like, you study! Gabe, you talaga. You don't cram. Yes. Any more tips? Um, but always remember, <laughs> you need to relax when you're taking the test. Because if you think too much, you're going to get mind blocked. And that's bad if you get mind blocked. You need to always, you have to be free when it comes to thinking about this. You always remember the basics and hopefully you'll do other tests. But make sure you know what topics you need to study for. Do not sit beside someone good looking. Yes, <laughs> you get distracted. Do not sit beside someone good looking. Yeah. Um, what else? Like, you, uh... You need to uh, actually, as much as possible, don't sit with anybody who's from the same school as you or your friend. Like, I think that's important for me. Like, that's that's that was something that I did. I I, I made a mistake of. Cause like, if you sit beside your friend, you're most probably gonna be like, oh, you don't know the bad Robert. That was that's gonna waste time. You're gonna waste, waste time. time. You're gonna end so, up talking. Yeah, you're gonna end up talking. So don't sit beside your classmates or your friends. There are those who got in a college, so they end up being relaxed about taking another college test. So think of it this way, each test is different and they have their own specific topics to focus on. Yeah, and to deal with senior year, 
going to experience senior like this, no matter what happens. Like, kahit your top one, kahit your like top one, or you're like, basta you're like super super responsible. It's going to happen. Like you're, you're not even gonna realize it. Basta it's just going to happen. So. Just remember that you're not graduated yet. <laughs> you need to just keep going on with school and do your best all the time. Yeah. Hey Dre, are you gonna study the upcoming test? Nah, I don't need that. Why not? I'm good this week. Are you sure? Yeah. No. We're not doing. I don't know anything. I'm happy for not studying. Do you have any notes? Give me borrow. All here. Thanks, thanks, man. All right, all right. Oh my god. You ready for the test now? No. What? Why not? I haven't even got two half pointers. Oh my god. Good luck. Wow, this test is so. Mm. It's, it's, I studied this. It's all here. Chat to be six. Oh, I would help you, but I would be cheating. Give it. Put it. Okay. What do you think of the test, man? Oh. It's pretty good. Sure. Nope. Oh. Go check the results online, man. Uh, hope I get dude, this. I already saw mine. I didn't make it. Really? Uh, what am I gonna tell my mom? I don't know. Well, I'm gonna track it. Say like, yes, I got in. Uh, dude, oh, finally paid off. Review classes, studying. Thank you, God. I should have studied so bad. You should have studied. <laughs> so now we have the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem is something that we learn early on in our high school days. It's usually something that we learn first when we tackle math. But then it's something that you have to know when you take your CET. So we have to go back and recap on this. So we have a right triangle. And it has sides A, B, and C. And the equation for the Pythagorean Theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And all we have to do is substitute the values. So you have an example as the Pythagorean theorem um, 3, 4, and 5. So let's substitute the values. A equals 3, B equals 4, C equals 5. And now let's put it in the equation. So now A squared plus B squared equals now let's substitute 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, which would be 5 squared. That's 9 plus 16 equals 25, which is correct. So that's the Pythagorean theorem. Now well, let's try something else. Let's try if b is not found. Um, so that's 3 and 5. That's what you have. So you only have c squared minus a squared equals b squared. All you have to do is transpose and make sure that um, your values are still in place because you have some values that you could use so you could finish the equation. So we have 25 minus 9 equals 16 and b squared equals 16 and the square root of that is 4. So now let's look for a. We have the values 5 and 4 which is b, square, which is b and c. So all we have to do is transpose and it will be the same as looking for b. It will be c squared minus b squared equals a squared. 25 minus 16 equals 9, a squared equals 9, and a is equals 3 because of the square root. So now we have Pythagorean triplets. Yeah, we have to understand the Pythagorean triplets because it's going to be really, really handy during your CETs. Like, you have to remember like a few, not, uh, not all Pythagorean triplets, but then like, you just have to remember notable ones because you're, it's going to be really helpful since, you know, you have a time constraint for the, for your CETs and then you, as long as you remember your triples, your triplets, then you're good to go. So here are a few notable triplets. We have 3, 4, and 5. 5, 12, and 13. 7, 24, 25. 8, 15, and 17. 9, 40, and 41. 20, 21, and 29. 
So yeah, here are notable triplets. But of course, there are a lot more. So um, make sure that you memorize these triplets because, you know, it's going to really, really help you. As I said, it's a, um, you, the CETs have time constraints and you have to make sure that you know your triplets because when it comes out in the test, you can answer it right away. So what are Pythagorean triplets or what are they really? Because like we need to really understand Pythagorean triplets or how they are to fu fully understand how to use them because it's hard to use something that you don't really understand. So Pythagorean triplets or triples are integers solutions that to the Pythagorean theorem which is the a squared a squared plus b squared equals c squared um, equation as stated here um, so they're just integer solutions so they follow through with the Pythagorean theorem like you they're sure they're sure ball wins to Pythagorean theorem like, if you see those numbers on the right triangle, then you know that it's following the Pythagorean theorem. So, for a triangle, the C side is a hypotenuse. So, that's pretty easy. Like, as long as it's the biggest number on the side of the triangle, then you know that should be the um, hypotenuse. So, yeah. That's something to remember about Pythagorean triples. And, as I said, it's really, 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 really important to know your Pythagorean triples because they are going to help you so much. So, just remember the notable... Pythagorean triple. So next we have the special angles. So here we have the special angles. It's something that you learned in school well you were uh, maybe a few years ago but there's something that we're going to show you. It's called the magic table and it's something that will really really help you during your CETs because it's like a table that actually holds all the information already. So here we have it. So sign zero degrees it's um zero so sine 30 degrees we have one half and sine 45 degrees it would be square root of two over two next we have sine 60 degrees square root of three over two and sine 90 degrees we have one Next, we'll have cosine. Cosine 0 degrees would be 1. Cosine 30 degrees would be a, a square root of 3 over 2. And then cosine 45 degrees would be a square root of 2 over 2. And cosine 60 degrees, we have 1 half. Cosine 90 degrees would be 0. Next, we have tangent. Tangent 0 degrees would be 0. Tangent 30 degrees would be square root of 3 over 3. Tangent 45 degrees would be 1. Tangent 60 degrees would be square root of 3. Tangent 90 degrees would be. Oh, there's nothing. <laughs> we don't have anything for 90 degrees. <laughs> um, so here's the table. So sine, cosine, and tangent. There's we have 0 degrees, we have 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. And this is the actual table that you have to memorize. And if you see the table as we write it down, there's actually a pattern to it that you can remember. It's more of like you just have to understand because like some of the some of the numbers here they're just being done again and again so you could just remember um the notable ones like zero one half one and yeah you're good to go so next we have the 30 60 90 triangles which are some which is something that's really easy that we get to understand when we were younger but then now we have to use it for our CETs and sometimes um, the test could confuse you so we have to go back and study it again. So we have the right triangle over here and of course we have our 30, 60, 90 angles. So of course the 90 degrees would be um, on, the bigger, on the bigger angle. We have 30 degrees on top, 60 degrees on bottom and we have to remember that 
the opposite of 60 would be square root of 3, the opposite of 90 would be 2, and the opposite of 30 would be 1. Next, we have the 45, 45, 90, which is something similar to a 30, 60, 90, except you have different values for the given sides. So here we go. Now we have the right triangle, as always, for our 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So here we go, let's write our triangle. Okay, and of course, for the biggest angle, we have 90 degrees. Opposite to the hypotenuse, we have 45, 45 for the other two. So of course, since they're 45, they have the same value on their sides. So 1, 1, and 90 degrees would have square root of 2. So now we have a sample for the previous lesson. We have 2 sine 30 degrees plus 3 cosine 60 degrees plus, I mean, minus 3 ta tangent 45 degrees. And here are solutions for this equation. So all we have to do is substitute from the given um, variable from the magic table. So we have 2 times 1 half plus 3 times 1 half minus 3 times 1. So that's 1 plus 3 over 2 minus 3 and we have negative 1 half. So yeah. So we're doing quadratic equations. So x equals b ne negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac so over 2a. So that's the equation for quadratic equation. So yeah. So let's just substitute a equals 3, b equals 2, c equals 4. So we have x equals negative 2 plus minus the square root of 2, 2 squared minus 4 times 3 times 4 over 2 times 3. So let's just um, do the necessary um, things to be done here. So we have minus 2 plus minus square root of 4 minus 4 times 12. And then let's just make that simpler. We have minus 2 plus minus the square root of 4 minus 48 over 6. So we have, um, let's make that even simpler x equals minus 2, negative 2, plus minus the square root of my, uh, negative, uh, negative 44 over 6. And this is equal to um, negative 2 plus, negative, uh, plus the square root of negative 44 over 6. Or negative 2 minus the square root of negative 44 over 6. And this is not, like, this is not finished. It's not done yet so it's wrong if you just use this equation so now let's further on and let's get this equation going and let's find the real answer so here we go um, so you have x equals 2 plus minus 2 I mean sorry 2 plus minus the square root of negative of negative of the square root of minus 4 times 11, so over 6, and then we simplify that. Negative 2 plus minus 2i, uh, 2i times the square root of 11 over 6, and we have x equals negative 2 plus 2i times the square root of 11 over 6, or negative 2 plus, I mean, sorry, minus, negative 2 minus 2i, 2i times the square root of 11 over 6, and that is our final answer, not the one before. So yeah, this is just a recap. And so here are our sources. We ha we got it from a website and of course from our past lessons in the year. And we would also like to thank ahead and all of ahead um all the other uh, practice places we've been to for our road to college. And thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you liked our video. All right, so serve and yes. So yeah, thank you so much for our video and I hope you come back. This is us. Thank you from us to you. Yay!